Ringer Four Star Playhouse presents Dick Powell, Charles Boyer, David Niven, Ida Lupino. Cheney. Who? Say that name again. Valerie Banks in this lobby. Oh, sure, sure, sure. I'm a little slow this morning. Valerie Banks and Ava Gardner and Marilyn Monroe. No? Just Valerie Banks? Oh, shucks. Let me talk to her. Sure, put her on. And I'm Gregory Peck. Well, hello, Val. What can I do for you? Oh, come on now. I give up. Who is it? Oh, come on. Okay, okay, I'll bite. Come on up by all means. Third floor as you get off the elevator. Let me have the desk. Valerie Banks. Huh. Now, look, this is Ben Cheney. Don't play games, Winnie. Who was that lady that called me just now? Valerie Banks. <laughs> How do you do, Mr. Cheney? But, but you really are. Yes. I tried to tell you on the phone. Well, I'm sorry. I, I thought it was some kind of joke. Takes a few minutes to get used to, but you'll be all right. Well, excuse me. Please come in. You're so kind. Very rude of me to barge in on a total stranger like this. Just before breakfast. Well, that's quite all right. That's lunch. But I had to see you. You... You had to see me. Yes, you are, Ben Cheney, director. Sounds right. I couldn't wait to make an appointment. You see, I, I've been up all night. I nearly took poison. Poison? Oh, Mr. Cheney, you don't know. You just don't know. Those vultures. Those mean, petty, stupid little vultures. Could I get you something? Coffee? Yes, with a squirt of brandy. Mr. Cheney, you have no idea. I spent three solid weeks rehearsing. I was lying perfect. The producer shelled out a half a million dollars on costumes, settings. The greatest cast money can buy. Not on your screen, but for the first time in person, Valerie Banks. Oh, Mr. Cheney. Last night was the most fabulous opening Broadway has ever seen. Just think of it. I, I got a little rose tree. Orchids, orchids, orchids. 200 telegrams from everybody in the motion picture industry. Success tonight, CB, DeMille. Good luck, my little Valentine. Dory Sherry. Get out there and slay them, darling bogey. Messages from Brando, Betty, Marilyn. They know I'm an actress, Mr. Cheney. Sugar? Four. I've been queen of the box office for six years. The Academy thought enough of my work to graciously bestow their coveted award. The exhibitors, the paying public, all know I'm an actress. But those vultures, those dirty, mean, two-bit little vultures. There, there, there. Now, drink your coffee. Life is too short. Oh, Mr. Cheney, you weren't there last night, were you? No. Well, I could sense something was wrong in my bones when we started getting boffs in the sad parts. Well, couldn't you tell from the out-of-town tryouts? I didn't have any out-of-town tryouts. I wanted to surprise them. That you did. Only two curtain calls. And when they brought on flowers, nobody applauded. Opening nights are always rough. At least the worst is over. It'll never be over. Not for me, Mr. Cheney. I'm the laughing stock of the country. Movie star lays bomb. What will my fans think? And my friends out on the coast, Mr. Cheney, they are laughing. Splitting their minks, laughing at me. How are the mighty fallen? It was so understanding. 
I don't like to see anybody get hurt. I wouldn't mind so much if all the critics hadn't said the same thing. I was going to start a scrapbook. Don't read them. Thank you. Poor loser, Mr. Cheney. Well, you had a harder fall than most. But tell me, why did you come to see me? Oh, my first reaction was to jump out of the window. I must have cried for six hours straight. And then I got mad. Now, believe me, Mr. Cheney, I don't go in for this artistic temperament routine. You can ask any of the boys on the movie lot. I'm strictly live and let live. But when I do blow up, the whole studio is knocked down. Flat! I practically tore up the telephone book looking for this joker, George J. Hammond. Don't tell me you got him out of bed. That kind doesn't go to bed. He waits out for ambulance calls so he can laugh at the accidents. What did he say? Oh, he gave me a rough time, Mr. Cheney. He kept hanging up and I kept dialing back. And the operator kept telling us to watch our language. But I finally pinned him down on that crack about taking acting lessons in the last paragraph there. Miss Banks has the emotional zing of a pillowcase full of wet tapioca. Lower down. Blissful in her ignorance, stunning in her arrogance, Miss Banks would do well to learn the ABCs of acting. The ABCs of acting. I said, listen, bud, you can't laugh off an Oscar. What did he say? He said the only Oscar he can't laugh off is Hammerstein, and he's working on him. But I still don't see where I come in. He gave me your name. He gave you my name? We don't even nod anymore. Well, when I finally got him back on the phone, he suggested I take private lessons. According to him, you're the greatest coach in New York. Oh, yes, I had a friend of his in a cast of mine last winter, a little blonde. I had to teach her to breathe. People pay to learn that. Well, acting isn't just getting up there. It's everything. That's why I came here, Mr. Cheney. I want to know, can you teach me everything? You want me to teach you acting for the stage? I'll pay you anything you ask. Anything? Name it. Say, uh, a couple of grand a day? Now, don't take me for a fool. You don't mean you think I'm serious? I'm dead serious. Yes, indeed. As of last night, Valerie Banks disappeared off the face of this earth. She isn't going to drink, smoke, or even wear makeup until she's made all those critics eat their words. But wouldn't you do better in regular acting classes? Oh, I don't think you understand. I'm a movie star. The Neighborhood Playhouse has courses, Lee Strasberg, the American Academy, all of them. Look, I collect crowds. If I went to school, the photographers would outnumber the students. But I can't just teach you acting. It's not like driving a car. Look. If you've got something against me, please say it. Miss Banks, I'd like to help you. I mean that sincerely, but I don't think I can. You mean you don't think I can learn? Oh, no, no, it isn't that. Oh, but you taught that critic's little blonde, didn't you? I scratched the surface, but I... But I, but I. What's wrong with my surface? Not a thing. Now, I can tell you're holding something back. I want to know. Miss Banks, I'll be honest with you. I was just reading your reviews when you phoned up from downstairs. And? I happen to agree with those reviews, Miss Banks. And if you must know, I was laughing. I see. Well, you asked me to tell you. Almost everyone in the theater has been following your every move. You remember your interview with Erskine last April? Acting is a cinch. Movies, the stage, it's all the same so long as you've got whammo. It was my press agent. You allowed it to appear in public print. Then you got the biggest hack in Hollywood to whip up a script for you, curved to fit the figure. The juiciest, pinkest cream puff the stage has ever seen. Then you signed on a sure shot director to polish each precious spoonful. You were financed by every angel from here to Fort Knox, a great big gilt-edged Easter egg. When I read in the newspapers that you'd hatched yourself a turkey gobbler, I was the happiest man in New York. You're one of those vultures. Well, not a full-fledged one, Miss Banks. I've got a soft heart. I couldn't help feeling sorry for you. Who needs you to feel sorry for me? Yeah, that's what I mean. You don't need a thing. I need acting lessons. You offer to pay me anything to fix it so you could smooth your feathers. You don't want to act, Miss Banks. You want revenge. I can't take it lying down. And you can't take it standing up either. You can't take truthful statements about trying to buy your way onto the stage. You're an amateur around here, you know that? 
You had the nerve to bite off a starring part. You accepted a fantastic salary. You wallowed in publicity. In my humble opinion, what you should have done is go to the smallest manager off-Broadway and beg for a walk-on. With my name? Especially with your name. Valerie Banks got exactly what was coming to her, and I'm not the guy to help her hit back. Where do you get this high and mighty artistic kick? I made a mistake. I paid for it, and I'm ready to start over. What do you want from me? You might try to start with a little humility. I don't know what you're talking about. Neither do I. I wish I'd never come here. I've got the most horrible headache. I'll get you a pill. Mr. Cheney, you've got to help me. Miss Banks, it would be like swimming upstream in a river of oatmeal. How dare you? I'm just trying to tell you, I haven't got the time. All right. All right. You've made your point. Now, look, what I just said still goes. All right, all right, Mr. Cheney. So I made a mistake. But let's forget about Valerie Banks, shall we? Let's forget all about her. Just try to think of me as a plain human person. And a human person has got a right to want something. And I want to be a stage actress, a good actress. Now, is that a crime? If you really mean that, nothing can stop you. Nothing can stop me if I can only get started. But how? Do you mind telling me what it is you're doing, Mr. Cheney, that's so important that you can't give a plain human person a start in the right direction? As a matter of fact, I'm not doing a thing right now. But it wouldn't be just a start in the right direction. It's a major undertaking. It would take a long time. How long? Years. Years? Oh, I know lots of people think it's just natural-born talent. But the best talent in the world doesn't add up to a finished product without workmanship. Man hours of hard labor. Look, I put in my time at hard labor. My mother ran a beauty parlor in Scranton. It's done wonders for you. But all the drudgery in the world won't make you an actress. What will, then? You see that statue? It's supposed to be modeled from life. This is the greatest actress that ever lived. Garble? Before our time. This is Mrs. Siddons. Yeah? Sarah Siddons. Died 1831. She acted with David Garrick. Wow. And Dr. Johnson wrote his name on the hem of her skirt. How did he get in the act? I wonder if she ever started from scratch. Well, she had to start someplace. Yeah, I guess so. You know, she might have looked something like you. You really think so? Jean Cocteau said this. In the theater, things must not be thin and delicate like gossamer, but thick like the rigging of a ship and visible at a distance. You're like that. Thick like a ship. You've got your share of raw material. It's hard to look away from you. That's a good sign. I can see why you appeal to the mass mind. She appealed to the mass mind and the class mind and to people's hearts. She had dignity, pathos, and when she wanted to, she could set the stage on fire. That's it. That's what I want. When you reach, you really reach for a star, don't you? When do we start? I'd only be giving you false hope, Miss Banks. You see, I don't think you can stand on your own two feet without all the soft lights and sweet music. What do you mean? In the movies, you just sit there. The makeup man squirts tears in your eyes. The lighting men turn on the dramatic hollows. The cameraman moves in for the perfect angle. Then your director takes it up in the cutting room, stirs in some canned excitement, and zingo, you win the award. It's not like that. Yeah, well, just for the record, on the stage, you do it yourself. But then what are we waiting for? You talk as if you're buying a vacant lot. We don't even know each other. How do you know we'd get along? Well, all right. All right. I was born in Westchester. Well, that's not exactly true. I was born in Scranton. My real name is Irma Jean Henshaw. My publicity says I'm 26, but of course I'm really 28. 29. 34. Cigarette? Oh, no, you've given them up. Where'd you go to school? Oh, Radcliffe. Uh, I mean, the University of Southern... grade school. High school. Scranton Junior High. 
Your family still living? You bet they are, on the fat of the land. I've got 11 dependents. How'd you happen to get in movies? Well, you see, there was this fellow I met. I was in a beauty contest at the time. All right, I was modeling lingerie, and I sent him some photos. He was passing through Scranton on his way to New York. Sort of a shortcut. And I went along for the ride. It's not very interesting. Was he a talent scout? More like a girl scout. We got married. I see. Where's your husband now? Oh, I'm single at the moment, Mr. Cheney. Well, where's the, uh... Uh, scout. Oh, uh, he's happy. Last I heard, he'd scouted himself up a chicken farm and a little chick. Four kids, no money. You liked him, didn't you? Oh, yes, he was a sweet guy. Taught me everything I know. How to honk your horn, step on your friends, steal. But he did introduce me to Claude Harris. Claude worked at Paramount. I see. And he gave you the screen test. No, he gave me a divorce. But it was through him I met Charles Voorhees. He gave me the screen test after I married him. Oh, yeah, I see. It's all very clear. From there to Hollywood. The rest is folklore. I think I have seen one of your pictures. Oh, did you see Breakdown? No. Well, they spent a million publicizing it. Well, I don't go very often. That gives me a sinking feeling. All right, you know all about my life story. What about you? What's your real name? Benjamin Cheney. Pretty close. How old are you? 43. You'd never know it. Clean living. From the looks of your bookshelves, you must have spent most of your life in college, huh? They're plays, honey. I did my learning working my way through the theater, traveling with shows, directing off-Broadway, arguing all night with geniuses. We have a flock of geniuses on the coast. My father was an English professor. My mother wrote poetry and cooked. They couldn't give me an allowance, but I got a penny a line for memorizing Shakespeare and the Bible. I didn't know whether to be an actor or a preacher, so I split the difference and became a director. Why couldn't my folks have given me a penny a line for something worth knowing? I got my allowance out of my old man's pants pockets when he was asleep. Mom and I used to race for it. I was just thinking about this statue of Mrs. Siddons. What about her? How much do you want for it? Oh, I couldn't sell Sarah. Not even for, say, 5000 You could get a whole crate of them for that. No, it isn't the money. Will you give it to me? Why do you want her? Well, you made her sound like such an inspiration. The statue could mean as much to me as an Oscar. Well, maybe someday I'll award her to you. I'll take you up on that. The day you give me this statue, I'll know I've made it. You know, Miss Banks, every so often you sound as if you had some real honest drive. But I don't trust you for two seconds. You talk big, but somehow I'm not convinced you could fight your way through trying to find yourself. I don't even know if you've got a self. Oh, believe me, Mr. Cheney, I've got a self. Prove it. Prove it. Just for one minute, let me see the real you. Well, uh, all right. Look at me. The real you, skip it. Skip it? I just had a passing flash of madness. What? Look, Miss Banks, maybe I'll make a deal with you. If you can prove to me that you're really a sincere, determined, living, breathing self, I'll teach you everything I know about acting for free. Oh, Mr. Cheney, I've just told you I have got a self. Let's find out. Here's a little improvisation. All you have to do is take that statue. You say you want it, let's see you take it. Walk over to the chest and hold her in your arm. You're kidding. That's the problem. Take that statue. Oh, come on now. Oh, it's too easy, isn't it? Except for one thing, I'm not going to let you, see? We'll find out if you're sincere. You mean act it out? I mean do it. Acting is based on truth. We'll find out what the truth is. Do you want it or don't you? I want it. Then take it. Take it, okay, so I'll take it. Well, but, uh, you're in the way. I'm in the way. Oh, 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 I see. I get it. Oh, you're really a wonderful teacher, Mr. Cheney. You don't talk, you demonstrate. Yeah, what have I shown you? About acting, how to want a thing. It's really wonderful. You're showing me you don't want it. But I do. Then why not take it? Well, I can't very well run over you. You give up? No, you're so strong. And I'm too little to flip you all by myself. Maybe there's a password, huh? Like, knock, knock, who's there? It's me, Val. Come in, Val. No? No. Move. Uh-huh. Look, Cheney, I haven't got all day. That's just too bad. Listen, you want me to take the statue? I'll take it. Now, just step aside. Sorry. Oh, now, really? 
Come on, try hard. The statue's there. I'm here. You're in the way. Get out of the way and I'll take the statue. Catch on. You give up? You'd like that, wouldn't you? Yes. I command you, move. <laughs> oh, I get it. I get it. The old stick-up. All right, let's talk business. How about a hundred a day? Fine. Well, that's settled. Now, just step aside. No. What do you mean, no? You just said fine. I said fine to the hundred a day, but you're not going to get that statue. You mean you're backing down on your word? I accept your kind offer, but you will not get that statue. Oh, come on. You're behaving like a jackass. <laughs> all right, you can keep your darn statue. There it is. That's all there is to it. Valerie Banks in a nutshell. A little sweet talk, a little rough talk, a little bribery, and you're through. You're really sincere. What drive, what determination. Oh, shut up. This is my apartment and my statue. You just told me to keep it. I will. Thank you. Oh, aren't you cute? My apartment, my statue, and you can't play with me anymore. Now, you cut it out, Cheney. I want that statue, so hand it over. Oh, will you get out of the way, or do I have to climb over you? I'm scared to death. I'm warning you. I'm shaking in my shoes. No, like my arms. You're hurting my arms. My limbs are insured for 100,000 each. Why do you have to hurt me? Oh, I'm sorry. Well, all right. Oh. No, no, no. Oh, I can't. This is stupid. All right, so you can't be an actress. It hurts and it's stupid. You want to sit down and talk some more? Talk, talk, talk. Oh, stop it. Now, you idiot, let go of me, will you? Will you stop it? Stop it. Take it easy. Let me have it. Let me. This is utterly ridiculous. Here I am, knocking myself out over a two-bit statue. Think of it. Last night, I was ready to drop dead, and here I am playing football with Stonehead Cheney. It's crazy. It's really crazy. Take it easy. Oh, I think I'm getting hysterical. I feel so dizzy. Get me a drink. Scotch with a little water. Oh, sure. Oh, I hate you. I hate you. I hate hey, you. Hey, give up. Oh, yes. I don't mind telling you, you can get close that way. I'm pretty weak-willed, but that's a cheap approach. You won't insult me. Oh, no, you won't. No! Ow! Aha! Now, get over that side of the room, do you hear me? Go on, move. Or so help me, I'll bite you through to the bone. Go on, move! Hey, let go! Stop it! I said let go or I'll do some fighting myself. Ah! Oh, how dare you! You can't take it, huh? No! <laughs> No, let me go, let me go! Ah! Never be an actress, never. Well, that does it. You fight like a tiger and then fold when you're beaten. Are you going to let that stop you? But it's broken. Sure, it's broken. Is that the end of it? People get broken, but they keep on going if they're any good. You get that, and nothing can stop you, even when you're all broken up. There's some glue on my desk. You mean paste it together? Pick up the pieces and start over. Then can I have it? No. No? You haven't earned it. You only took it. That was the problem in the improvisation. You took it. You proved you're sincere. With a lot of work, you might get somewhere. But you haven't proved you're an actress. I said I'd give you that statue the day I thought you'd become an actress. Well, glue it back together so there'd be something to give. But all these little pieces. And put it back on the chest where it belongs. You got yourself a deal, Irma Jean Henshaw. You're going to be a real actress. An actress? Oh, I'm going to be a real actress. <laughs> but all these little pieces. Oh.